Hey Capricorn, welcome to your weekly forecast for October 28th through November 3rd. We're going to check in and see what's coming up for you as we're coming out of the new moon period, heading into a Mercury retrograde. Uh, we're going to see what's happening in the week ahead, Halloween week with our Halloween deck. And then we're going to pull a spirit message for you from this deck here. If you are curious about which cards I'm using, I always have the links in the description of the video so that you can check them out and get them for yourself if you would like. All right, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Rising, what is happening for you all October 28th through November 3rd? What does Capricorn need to know? What is headed Capricorn's way? What is going on for Capricorn? Okay, my darlings. Here is your Monday, Tuesday. Here is your Wednesday, Thursday. And here is your Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All right, my dears. Okay, so Monday, Tuesday, we have our lovely strength card. So Capricorn, this is going to apply in a couple of different ways for different ones of you. Strength is going to be um, really a card that's coming in, letting us know that this is a shift, a time of a great shift for you, and that you're preparing to take steps out into the unknown, okay? That might not be something you typically hear with the Strength card, but that is something I see as a common theme over the years in the readings that I have done for myself and for clients. This card usually comes up when you're about to make a really big change in your life and you're about to go into something that makes you feel vulnerable. For some of you, this will be a relationship after a long period of singleness. For some of you, this will be a career change. For some of you, I feel some of you are doing something in investigating your history, like investigating your story. Like, I don't know, maybe you were adopted or you suspect uh, that there's some kind of family secret or something. You may be going through trying to figure out you might be going through a paper trail you might be beginning to talk to people and see if you can get them to open up and tell you things because you feel like maybe something is going on or that people have been keeping something from you um and so I feel for some of you there's some level of like an investigation that you're doing and it's requiring for you to just kind of brace yourself because you simply don't know what you're going to uncover um, it's, it's like a nervousness, like, oh, what am I going to find? Is it going to upset me? Is it going to be bad news? Is it going to be good news? Am I going to find something that's going to bother me? So I feel in that way, Capricorn, like some of you are bracing yourselves. Um, for other ones of you, it may not be as dramatic and it might be coming in in a very more subtle way in which you're beginning to make positive changes in your life that, you know, the negative ego will come up and try to throw you off track. So the strength card is asking you, Capricorn, to stay committed to yourself, not to give up on the changes that you're making, not to give up on this new path. OK, I feel like you all have already started the path and this is asking you not to give up, not to give up, uh, not to stop, to keep going. Um, I will also say this, Capricorn, I feel that a lot of you are finally deciding uh, to do something by yourself, like you were waiting on someone to join you, whether it was, you know, taking a class or starting a business, or you were wanting to do things and you're wanting your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your spouse to do it with you, or there was a lot of things that you were putting off until you met, quote unquote, the one, uh, like, oh, well, when I meet my person, I'll go travel to Italy. When I meet my person, um, I'll go do this or I'll go do that or, you know, whatever. And you're like, you know what? I don't want to wait on this person anymore. And you're beginning to take steps that are pushing you out of your comfort zone. Understand and know that because this is a major arcana card, this is kind of what you're supposed to be doing. You're being led or guided to do this because it's putting you on the path. It's putting you on the mark of where... Uh, you are in this moment, okay? Uh, I just feel a lot of you are even beginning to challenge yourself and do the things that scare you. Um, do the things that, that make you feel afraid or 
um, like like challenging yourself. But it's all for the sake of opening up new opportunities and bringing in new friends and new experiences. So it's positive. Your Friday, Saturday, no, <laughs> I am fast forwarding to the end of the week. Your Wednesday, Thursday, my darlings, is king of swords or king of bats. So you're getting really serious about what you're going to do and how you're going to do things. When I see king of swords, it gives me a sense and a feeling that for you, like you're in this energy where you're like, you know what? It is go time. It is time to make things happen. It is time to uh, begin, uh, my path. It is time to begin my way. And so you're beginning to calculate the cost. You're beginning to calculate how to go about something, what to do, when to do it, you know, what it's going to cost you, how much time it's going to take. It's a very, very specific energy in that way. But there's also an element that comes in with King of Swords that has to do with negotiation. Capricorn, there's a situation this is confirming for me that you guys are confronting something, right? Like you're coming out of your comfort zone to make some change or to take some steps. And King of Swords is telling me that you're finally getting into the element where you're able to put your feelings aside and approach it from a logical uh, kind of uh, mental way of where you're getting organized and you're planning and you're going into it without a whole lot of heavy emotions or hurt feelings or resentments. There's an element that comes in with King of Bats that has to do, or King of Swords, that has to do with negotiating. So some of you are confronting a person and, and you're bargaining or you're reasoning or you're negotiating about how you want things to be moving forward. Um, I really feel like a lot of you are coming into this time when um, you are ready to create your own situation or your own scenario. Like you may be going to a boss or to an employer and saying, you know what, I had a really great idea for a project or I had an idea of something maybe that we could do in the company that would be very helpful or that might make some positive changes or that might bring in some new clients. Like you're going in and you're offering something you would like a chance to do and you're negotiating it with them. You're explaining to them why this is going to be a good thing for them, uh, how you know that this is going to be an outcome, you know, what skills you're bringing to the table, why it's good uh, to allow you to to. Um, be in charge of this idea or this project. I just figure you're doing something, Capricorn, where you're creating your own opportunity. And maybe for some of you, it's not at work. Maybe you're approaching somebody that you know, and you're saying, hey, I think I can help you, uh, you know, uh, you know, um, work on a certain project you mentioned, or I could help you redecorate, or I could help you do this, or I could help you do that, or I could help, you know, cater your upcoming wedding or whatever. Like you're creating some kind of um, opportunity for you to showcase your skills. And it's like a win-win. It's like you're opening the door for you to begin doing something you like doing or breaking up the monotony, breaking up like if you've been very bored or you haven't been happy in what you're doing. I just feel in some ways some of you are creating a job opportunity or you're creating an opportunity to place on your portfolio or your resume if you're trying to make a career change or if you're trying to start some kind of a business. You're creating and negotiating an opportunity for yourself. And this is the best part. You're having the courage to set a price. Like you're having a courage to to set a reasonable, fair, and well-deserved compensation rate. Like here's what I'm doing and here's what would be fair to pay me for doing this. And and you're not feeling bad about that. Like you're feeling confident and you're not being shy about it. You're coming in with this assertiveness. I do feel for some of you Capricorn, and I'm not trying to be negative. I'm not trying to like come in with like paranoia type stuff. But I do feel some of you are going to find out that somebody has been speaking about you or maybe recently over the weekend somebody said something and it, you just, you keep thinking about it in your head and you're like, wow, you know what? I kind of feel like the fact that that person said that, even though it was a really quick statement and I let it pass, I didn't say anything. I feel like this person, like this kind of showed me that maybe this person isn't respecting me 
or it made me see this person in a different light or a different way, or I felt offended by what they said. And so maybe in the past, Capricorn, you wouldn't have said anything and it would have eaten you up and you would have resented that person. But again, I feel like you're getting control of your emotions. You're getting in control of your feelings and you are kind of approaching this person and saying, hey, remember the other day, you know, we were all just kind of together and you said this and this and that. I wanted to ask you about that. Like, you know, maybe I misunderstood it or what did you mean by that? Okay, well, here's how it made me feel or here's how it sounded to me. And and so I just kind of feel like you're standing up for yourself or you're basically letting this person know like, hey, I'm on to you. Like that was disrespectful, but like you're not making it a big deal. You're not making it a big issue. You're not getting upset. You're not getting emotional. You're not being overly sensitive about it. But I kind of feel some of you are like laying it down with somebody like, uh, listen, uh, you need to be a little bit more respectful or, you know, and maybe you're not saying it that firmly, but you're saying it in a very calm way where you're presenting facts. Like, just facts that they can't argue with. And you're just basically letting them know, like, you know, that's not cool. Like, it's not like that was unnecessary or that was uncalled for. So I kind of feel like some of you are taking back your power in that way, in, in, in that kind of confrontation. I, I, I said confrontation, but I want to clarify something. I don't feel like it's going to be a fight. I don't mean confrontation in terms of you guys are going to argue and fight. I just feel like you're confronting the person about it like you're approaching them about it and you're just you're setting it straight and that person is learning whoa I need to be more respectful when I'm dealing with Capricorn or I need to be more cautious about my words because it's not cute Capricorn I feel some of you have this trigger maybe not all of you but some of you have this trigger where um like maybe from the time you were little you had people that liked to pick on you and and maybe it was like their weird way of showing affection or it was their weird way. Like maybe it was just like the family dynamic or maybe it's a cultural dynamic. Like, you know, oh, let's get together and let's make fun of this one or let's make fun of that one. And everybody would get it, right? Like maybe you weren't the only one. Maybe, you know, probably other people in your family or in your culture have all experienced that. But it may have uh, affected you in the way where you kind of, feel that from time to time people gang up and make fun of fun of you and you find yourself in situations where you're the butt of the joke and it really really gets under your skin because that inner child that used to get picked on that couldn't stand up for you know yourself it, it gets triggered and that's what I feel like is happening with this person that you're confronting I feel like it's that kind of a situation like this person thought it was cute or funny to put you down or say something about you in front of other people like oh we're all gonna laugh at Capricorn and you're like hell no uh-uh I'm not here to be the butt of the joke but again you're able to calm your feelings and you're able to approach it in a way where you don't feel um like oh man I lost my cool or I look so sensitive or man people are probably talking about how sensitive I am or people are, must think I really overreacted like you're just presenting facts and you're and you're saying it in like a non reactive way and that person's just kind of like man I look really stupid right now like Capricorn called me out I don't know how to cover this up I don't know how to how to deny it all I can say is I didn't mean it that way and they're just like, oh, okay, all right, well, that's cool. I was just checking. I just wanted to know because it kind of seemed like this is what you were saying. And I just wanted to know, like, you know, did I understand you right or not? And you're cool with leaving it there, right? And that person knows. Like, it's kind of like they know that, like, you're on to them. And so they know next time when they're around you that you're not there to be the butt of their joke. You're not there to make them look cute or make them look funny. That's not why you were born on this earth, you know? So I just feel it's like a it's it's a it's a small thing, but it's feeling like a big victory to some of you as we're coming into Mercury retrograde. Here we are, Queen of Ghosts. OK, so some of you may be dealing with a water sign. Um, some of you may be uh, having more interaction with your mother or a mother figure or um, a, a partner, if you are with a partner who is feminine, or who has a lot of feminine energy, or if you are seeking a life partner, a feminine life partner, 
um, you might find that uh, you're having a lot of memories that are going back into like the way that you were mothered or the way that you were treated as we go into Mercury retrograde. So you might have memories that you're releasing. I have to say something, guys, and maybe some of you don't agree with me, but the past couple of moon cycles ever since um they've been getting more and more intense but that aries full moon we had uh you know last a uh, couple like i think it was maybe 2 months ago and then we had the new moon in scorpio um this over this past weekend and now we're coming into the full moon in taurus it the moon energy has been really intense like super intense and I feel like even people who aren't typically sensitive to moon energy have been feeling emotional or agitated lately with a lot of the shifts, shifts that are happening energetically. So in that reason, you know, we're right smack coming out of the, the new moon in Scorpio. New moons don't typically make us emotional, but this one brought up a lot of emotions. And then we're going into a very emotional full moon in Taurus um, in November, in the next couple of weeks, and we have the Mercury retrograde. So I kind of feel like a lot of people's emotions are really to the surface right now. And I feel that's going to be happening for you too, Capricorn. And I feel that so many of you have been so busy making a living or working on self-improvement. I feel a lot of you have been putting a lot of work into how you look right? Like you've been putting a lot of work into like wanting to look a certain way or like, you know, use the best products or have nice clothes or, you know, like, you know, how, how things look in your home, um, you know, your, your vehicle, like you've been putting a lot of work into your aesthetic, and you've been looking at it as a way of, oh, well, I'm organizing my life, right? If I have an organized life and I have nice things to look at, it's going to put me in a better mood. Uh, I'm going to have clearer thoughts and all this stuff. And it has worked. But now that you have clearer thoughts and now that there's a sense of organization around you, guess what? The next step is you're going to have emotions coming to the surface. And so now is going to come the time of emotional care, to put care into your emotions and to how things are making you feel. So you're no longer looking at things from the sense of aesthetics, like how they look. You're looking at things on how they make you feel. Okay, so there's a, there's a bout of healing that you're coming into, but it's going to be a healing in terms of release. And I feel a lot of the release is coming in through, through memories. And Spirit is saying as it's coming up, be gentle with yourself. Make sure that you're doing things that are feeding or nourishing your soul. I feel Capricorn that as we're coming to the Mercury retrograde energy, a lot of you are feeling the need for inspiration for things that are going to inspire you. And I don't know if this is going to be helpful for a lot of you. Sometimes spirit will give me a movie or a song, um, like tying it into the reading. So maybe for some of you, this, this movie is something you're going to relate to, or it's going to really inspire you. But the movie that's coming to my mind is Cinderella, man. Okay. <laughs> Cinderella man and finding Nemo. I get, and you know what the funny thing is? They, they kind of do have a similar theme. One is a, one is a, um, Ron Howard movie, uh, you know, true story about, uh, somebody in the great depression who was like this great boxer. Um, and it, it, he ran into some really hard times and, uh, it's very inspirational to see everything that he went through. I can't remember the name of the actual boxer, uh, but Cinderella man, maybe some of you, if you're needing like a pick me up or you're needing something to inspire you, you might want to check it out. I know it has like a kind of like, like a girly title, but I guarantee you, if you are a masculine person or you're really manly, you will enjoy it. I swear to you. My ex-husband was like, dude, like he was a man's man, grew up, uh, raised in like, you know, New York, like just really, really manly, manly guy. And when we got divorced, he went into my boxes and he stole my copy of Cinderella Man. And he did it sneaky too. Back in the day when we had DVDs, right? Like back in the day, those of you who remember having physical copies of movies and stuff. He left the box in my stuff. He just opened it up and he took the disc out. And then later I was like, you took my movie. He's like, yeah, I did. 
Uh, it's a really good movie. I can't blame him. I can't, I can't be mad at the guy. It's a really good movie. Um, so that might be very inspirational for some of you. Uh, and then I got Finding Nemo, uh, which might be like a nice little feel good thing for some of you as well. So I just feel like you need something like to make the soul feel good, make the soul feel happy. Let's pull your spirit card for the week, Capricorn. See what we have. And I encourage you to watch your moon sign and rising sign videos as well. Uh, some weeks they may resonate with you more. It might give you a little extra information. It could be definitely helpful for you. And so the card you have here is surrender. Surrender. Now, surrender is like a complicated concept because I, I had a hard time understanding that when I came into my spiritual journey. It's like, well, wait a minute. Are we supposed to manifest? Are we supposed to visualize what we want and try to create it and try to call it into our life? Or are we supposed to surrender and give up? It, it was the most confusing thing for me. So if you're confused about it, I don't blame you, but hopefully I can share this with you that might help you understand the difference. Yes, you want to visualize. Yes, you want to manifest. Yes, you want to call into your life. But what it means to surrender, surrender doesn't mean that you're giving up. It's not surrendering in the sense that you're waving the white flag like, I give up, I surrender, you know. It's not like that. When you surrender, you're putting out that hope or you're putting out that prayer, or you're putting out the thing that you're wishing to manifest, but you're putting out with a sense of faith where you're saying, if this is really going to make me happy, if this is really what I think it is, if this really is going to end up being the thing that's going to be good for me, then God, universe, spirit will, will make it happen right? But I also believe that whatever comes may bring me something better. I might not understand the time frame. I may not understand the way that it's coming in. I may not understand that there's going to be changes to my wish and it might show up to me in a different way, not exactly as I had envisioned, but it's going to come in some way and I'm going to surrender that outcome. I'm going to surrender how it's going to happen. I'm going to surrender when it's going to happen and I'm going to surrender exactly what it's going to look like when it's here. But here is my prayer. Here is my hope. Here is my wish. I will wait patiently as to what guidance comes in and what steps I need to take. That's what it is to surrender. Okay. So I hope that that's helpful. Uh, so a lot of you are surrendering in that way. Emotions might be coming up, things that resentments that you're having to release, but it's all a part of your transformation. Like you're surrendering it and you're just, you're offering it up and that I'm going to release this. Like it might not make sense to me, but I'm going to trust that it's, it's going to make sense in some way down the line. Especially those of you that are digging up some secrets. You might find that the more you're digging up these secrets, the more questions you have. And you just have to have faith and surrender that, you know, what is meant to come in is going to come in at the right time and that it's coming in, in in the time frame that you're ready to hear it or that you're ready to to, to deal with it. All right, my darlings. Uh, again, I hope this is helpful. I encourage you also, if you would like to schedule a private reading, go ahead and click on the Calendly link in the description of the video. You can schedule a private reading with me there. If you wanted to get a quick reading before the end of the year, you've been on the fence about it, now's a good time to get in. I have a few more availability uh, reading availabilities left in November that I'm taking time off at the end of November because I'm going to start working on your guys' videos for the 2020 year a uh, 12 month forecast like 12 month prediction for you guys prediction month by month for 2020 i did those videos um last year last december and so after i posted them everybody wanted a, a private reading for their own 12 month forecast and so i got booked out a few months like a few months out that may happen this year it may not i guess it depends on what comes up in the readings some people might be like oh well yeah that sounds good to me i want to find out more and some people might be like oh no she's off so we'll see we'll see what comes out in the readings but once those videos go up 
the calendar could potentially fill up quickly. And then if that's the case, you might not be able to get in until like January or February. Um, again, we'll see. We'll see what the readings are and what comes up and how people feel about it. But if you've been just wanting a quick one about a certain situation or a certain subject before the end of the year, it might be a good time to try to get that booked within the next couple of days. But, you know, whenever you're ready, obviously I'm here to read for you and I'm happy whenever you're ready. Uh, I thank you guys for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, and don't forget to watch your love videos. One last thing. I didn't talk too much about love and romance in the weeklies because I don't do that. I do the love reading separately, and because we have such massive energies coming in, all of the love readings for November... I just stepped out of the way. I let spirit talk. I channeled. I channeled the whole reading. I don't even remember it, guys. I don't even remember what came out because it wasn't me. It was 100% spirit. Um, so I would encourage you all to check that out, even if you're not interested in love, because a lot of what came in through spirit was uh, really deep about other life aspects and things that are affecting love, but also affecting other areas. So I, I just, I just, I just felt like they were very powerful and I haven't had a chance to sit through and rewatch them, but I know I felt a lot of love and I felt very strongly connected. I remember the feeling and it felt intense just being that channel. So I hope that you guys can check it out. I hope it's helpful to you. And again, I thank you guys for being here. Take care, Capricorn.